What's going on? It's Mike here with MCTV, Mike Real Sports Life on all platforms, and we're going to be taking the channel on a little pivot. I think it's going to be more um, constructive and productive to approach things from a sports point of view because that's part of who I am at my core, and that's how you gain the most success out of things is aligning it as close to who you are as possible. So it just comes second nature. It's going to add value to young athletes, old athletes, current athletes, uh, former athletes, and people who just follow sports in general. Because I've had teammates on every end of the spectrum, um, ultra successful, signed multi-million dollar contracts in the NBA, NFL, MLB. And I've also had teammates get locked up. I've had teammates self-delete because life after sports is so much of the unknown. And I think if more of us were out here talking about it and, and providing guidance and showing ways where you can be successful after sports, then it may ease that transition and help out a lot of people. So let's get it. Y'all would realize that he's not a stud. Jock is a, really, a really good basketball player. Jock did everything he could to lift himself and his family out of this type of environment and to get away from this. And for some reason, he wants to surround himself with these type of people. Mm -hmm. Why? Bro, you not hard. That's not your life. People that in that life would give anything to be in your life. Great point. For some reason, you are worth 30, you worth all, you got a $200 million contract and you want people in the NBA to think you hood. But let's not act like this is just a job thing. I saw this playing college quarterback. People would get to campus and then want to portray themselves as some kind of thug or somebody that was extra hard. And I'm like, bro, you're a college student, dog. Despite what whatever background you came from, why don't you just be a college student? You don't have to carry that with you. Uh, but, I mean, a lot of it was fake. <laughs> Which type of people, bro, you putting yourself in harm's way when you don't have to. Yep. Nobody looks at you, John, think, man, that's a thug. He hood. Why, he would down, you, he... why would you want them to think that? You have a desire to be something you're not. Mm. Y'all talk so much to have done so little. Mm. That's a part of it. I get that. That's a part of his generation. <laughs> Let's just be honest. But this, 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 what you're going about, pretending like you, like you down like that, that you talk, that you carry, bro, you putting yourself in harm's way. Mm. And it's not a good look for you. Stop this, man. This is not you. You, you, I mean, you, you played basketball to get out of this environment. You could, hey, I guarantee you got homeboy. You say that's your fam. You tweet that that's your fam. That probably had talent like you, but they chose that life. Right. Facts. Bro, you need to let that go. Because that's not you. It's not. You pretend like you hard, but you're not, John. You're opening yourself up. You're putting yourself in a position you don't even need to be in. And for what? For street cred? Come on, bro. There's a good point to be made here. A lot of times, we don't take advice from people we don't like. When that may be the only person that's going to give you the most unadulterated truth because they have no stake in making you happy. What has the last 10 or 11 days been like for you? And how are you doing? Uh, me personally, um, I feel mentally good that I haven't you know, been in you know, many years since I, I really got drafted to the league. I'm in a space where I'm very comfortable uh, uh, to know, you know. Two weeks. I wonder how much money he's lost in two weeks. Days to be able to, you know, learn how to pretty much be there for myself and, you know, learn, you know, different ways to you know, manage stress um, in a positive way. So, in particular, if you don't mind getting into detail, like, what were you doing these last 10 days and what did it teach you about yourself? Just learning, you know, I can open up. I can, you know, 
express my feelings and that it's you know, okay to be able to express your feelings. So you know, I was constantly you know, talking to therapists. Um, I've been doing, you know, breathing treatment. Um, I've been doing anxiety breathing, you know, different stuff to... Come on now, bro. Let's look up what Ricky treatment is. It says, <laughs> it says, Ricky is a Japanese form of energy healing. Key practitioners use a technique called palm healing or hands-on healing through which universal energy is said to be transferred through the palms of the practitioner to the patient in order to encourage emotional or physical healing. He went and got that Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> I wonder if he had that uh, Deshaun Watson, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> How stressful can it be being John Morant? Very. Um, and I feel like, you know, I didn't pay enough attention to that. You know, when it got rough, and you know, I pretty much just let it all build up. And um, that's why I felt like, you know, I needed, you know, my time away to, you know, better myself. What the fuck did being stressed have to do with you in, on IG Live flashing the pistol? I, I got to be real about it. I admire you for that because at different points of my life, to be honest with you, I've had friends and family members suggest I do the same thing. And I have done that. And for you to actually take that step is a very important one. I want to point out something here. The fact that they have Jalen Rose sitting across from Ja Morant is a layered situation in itself, right? Jalen Rose was a part of the the Michigan bad boy crew in Fab Five. Even though, I mean, they weren't bad boys. They were just themselves, but that's what they're touted as, right? The Fab Five. And he openly admitted that he resented Grant Hill. One, it was his rival, but two, because of his upbringing. Private school, both parents, um, identical to that of John Moran, right? Private school, both parents. So it's interesting that he's the one conducting this interview. This Gail King R. Kelly's style type interview at that when did you look in the mirror and say i'm gonna do this because it was reported a couple of days ago that it happened but when did you say i'm gonna do this and when it when it started hitting that money I made a that pocketbook terrible mistake i've been inside um, the club and you know went live here's one thing i, I i'm not going to be overly critical of, of him because he's 23 years old and he's making mistakes like 23 year olds make only difference is he's got a lot of money and is on a public platform. So I don't think it's constructive to be overly critical of this 23 year old young man. But at the same time, you have to realize the opportunity at hand, how much money is he losing missing these? I think it's eight games and for everybody that stepped away from him in this time, he's going to reap that tenfold and follow-up endorsements from therapy um, companies and, and that sort of thing. But let's not make a mistake to, to gloss over. This is what you want. This is why you play sports, to get to this level, to have this opportunity, to have this responsibility, to have this influence and affluence, to dictate what's around you. John, when did you realize I need to get some counsel? Tell me that morning, your thoughts. When I woke up and saw myself on the news in that strip club. <laughs> it was that morning, you know, when I woke up and, you know, seen my you know, name on the, all over the media for, you know, bad reasons, the wrong reasons, which I didn't, you know, wanted to see. 
Man, which that strip club thing is kind of foul. You can you can see that he spent a lot of money in that strip club, and for them to leak that footage, or at least that picture that I saw of him, which I won't share, I think that's wrong. If I was him, I'd buy the strip club. But that's just me being petty. I made a call. Said, you know, I need to get away and you know, I need to, you know, find myself again. You know, that's when I entered the counseling program and you know, I've been there for a couple of weeks now. When you get drafted, you go from being a member of the crew, a member of the family, to, in a lot of ways, these are your staff and employees. Mm -hmm. You're trying to put everybody on. You're trying to put everybody in position to be successful because they help you become who you are. So I know it's tough to figure out professionally who can roll with me and who I need to leave behind in order to chase my goals. So for you, what has it been like for you over these last couple of weeks? And how has it been for you to make tough decisions about who you're rolling with as it relates to your inner circle? Yeah. Um, it definitely has been tough. You know, I'm big on loyalty, but, you know, I have, like I said, have to, you let me say this. Never let the guise of loyalty distract you from the truth of a situation. Ever. I'll be there for myself. I have to, you know, put myself in good position. So, you know, I have to, you know, find out, you know, who's really for me and who's going to help me, you know, be in good positions at all times. You know, that's the decisions I had to make. You should have you know, did that coming out of college. Good about and very comfortable about that. You know, I would be in a positive, you know, light now with everything, you know, that. I think this is why I need to speak on this type of stuff because I have no sympathy. Like, he's talking about basically thinning out his circle, um, removing people and influences that may not, you know, Put him in the best situations. As a 23-year-old NBA millionaire, bro, I've been doing that my whole life just to get to this point. So I think that's why my perspective is a little different and, and it's going to be good. I got no sympathy, dog. Yes, you deserve grace. Yes, you deserve your career and another chance to be successful in your career. But you just fucked up. That's it. I mean, I know you have to go on an apology tour, but um, you just messed up. Make no mistake. Ja is still going to be the face of the league. Even more so now in a climate where It's becoming more socially acceptable for men to be vulnerable. Think about this. He messed up. He's rich already, but he had to go seek counseling. He lost his endorsements. He's going to get 10 times those endorsements back. Um, he's a father. He's a family guy. He's a loyal guy. He's going to be the face of the league. Um, I think this will blow over in six to eight months. Also, I'll you know, send my apologies you know, to everybody. Love.